Good evening and welcome to the Channel Studios here in London with your international news around the world in five. Ukraine's President Zelensky has warned Russia could do something particularly ugly ahead of independence celebrations. Kyiv officials have banned mass events in the Ukrainian capital, while the northern city of Kharkiv plans a curfew from Tuesday evening. Wednesday marks the 31st anniversary of Ukraine's independence from Soviet rule and six months since the start of Russia's invasion. Meanwhile, Russia has accused Ukrainian intelligence officers of organizing the assassination of Daria Dugina, the daughter of one of President Vladimir Putin's top supporters. The FSB, Russia's internal security service, said a Ukrainian citizen who arrived in the country in July was behind the attack on Saturday night. Officers said that the suspect fled Russia into Estonia after Dugina was killed in a car bomb on a road outside Moscow. Ukraine has denied involvement in the attack, and a former Russian MP said yesterday that internal groups opposed to Putin's rule were behind the assassination. Lawyers of Rayla Odinga, who came second in Kenya's presidential election, has filed a legal case challenging the result. According to the Electoral Commission, Mr Odinga took 48.8% of the vote, losing to William Ruto's 50.5%. However, four of the seven electoral commissioners refused to endorse the outcome, alleging that the way the final results were tallied was opaque. The seven judges at the Supreme Court will have 14 days to make a ruling. The action we have taken is perfectly in line with the stipulations of our constitution on resolving electoral disputes. It affirms our deep belief in constitutionalism the rule of law, and a peaceful resolution of disputes, including high-stakes ones, like the presidential election. Scores of supporters of Pakistan's former Prime Minister Imran Khan have gathered outside his hilltop mansion in the capital Islamabad, vowing to prevent his arrest on anti-terrorism accusations. The protesters chanted slogans against the government of Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif which took over after Khan's ouster in a confidence vote in April. The move follows a police case filed against Khan on Saturday for threatening government officials in a public speech about the alleged police torture of one of his aides, who faces sedition charges for inciting mutiny in the powerful military. Road bridges around northwestern Mexico have been inundated or damaged by flood water following heavy rain. Footage shows slow-moving traffic crossing an inundated section of the Douglas Bridge, which links the cities of Empalme and Guimas. High waves from the Sea of Cortez also contributed to the flooding. A section of the Buena Vista Bridge, which is located at the guimas Obregon bypass, had collapsed with water seen rushing rapidly beneath it. A new documentary has been released called The Princess to coincide with the 25th anniversary of the death of Diana, the Princess of Wales. Told exclusively through contemporaneous archive, creating a bold and immersive narrative of her life and death. It also illuminates how the public's attitude to the monarchy was and still is. The filmmaker behind the show explained why he finds the topic of her life and death so profound. But Diana's death really was a moment where the whole world just seemed to be focused on this singular event. And you know, I vividly remember as an 11-year-old being in my bedroom and my mum came in very early in the morning and kind of broke the news. And we then kind of gathered around this little TV in my parents' room and sort of watched for the next few hours this sort of unfolding story. And then we also sat for the days and most of the week afterwards and watched tens of thousands of people and then hundreds of thousands of people take to the streets of London. And there was this kind of extraordinary outpouring of grief, this kind of collective wave of emotion. And finally, over 20 teams have competed in a new game known as Water Rugby in Switzerland. With a slippery surface, spectators might not be surprised to see players falling into the water, but few perhaps knew that falling in was also intentional. In this five-a-side game of touch rugby, players must jump off the end of the pitch into Lake Geneva to score a try. All players accessed the pitch by a floating pontoon that moved from the shore to the pitch. The event was organised by Water Rugby Lausanne to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the Lausanne University Rugby Club. And that's your international news around the world in five. Now back to the channel studios in Lagos.